Honkai Starro versus Genshin Impact, the passion, drama, and consequences of virtual investments. This actually sounds insane. Greetings, travelers. Hey. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past few weeks, the gacha community is currently experiencing a significant upheaval. Yep. The Honkai Star Rail and Genshin it's Impact communities, along with their content creators, have found themselves embroiled in heated disputes. It's not good. <laughs> what, dude? What, man? What? You know what's crazy? Those are the heated disputes to other people. For me, majorly, that's just me having fun. Okay, I love calling people out on their bullshit. It's really good. It's really, really, really good. And if there's one thing that I don't like, it's people thinking that somebody is something that they're not. And the amount of false impressions that people have of the content creators in this space are insane. The bells of awakening and the bells of the mask off are ringing. And it's happening. It's important to know what it is that you're consuming. And I can tell you this right now. If you think that I'm a good guy, you're wrong. I'm a dickhead, and I know I am, and I hope you know that. And you want to know why? There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you are who you say you are, that's all that matters. In this video, I'm going to go over the following topics. Unless you're a furry. Topics. Content creators and their impact on the community. Unhealthy obsessions. And what we can do to encourage change. So buckle up, it's going to be a doozy. And as long as you're not harming others. Let's continue. Passion runs deep in the gacha community, often sparking intense debates. Unless you're harming people that deserve to be harmed. Like furries. Alright, let's continue. However, it's crucial to recognize that criticizing a game is not an attack on the developers or the company behind it. True! True and base. The fact that the fact that criticizing a company is considered as toxic behavior is the most pussy take I've ever heard in my entire life. Other than, oh my god, you called me a mint picker, I'm gonna have a panic attack and cry. Instead, it's a constructive way of expressing our expectations and desires as consumers. Mm -hmm. Whether it's pointing out bugs, suggesting improvements, or questioning design choices, yep. our critiques play a vital role in shaping the future of gaming. True. In comparison to other fandoms, such as Pokemon vs. Digimon, Coke vs. Pepsi, yep. or World of Warcraft vs. Final Fantasy XIV, yep. none match the intensity of the back and forth between Hawkeye, Star Wheel, and Genshin Impact fans. <laughs> the gaming community... <laughs> oh, shit, true. It is actually so toxic. And the funniest thing is, Coke and Pepsi are different companies. World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy are different companies. Pokemon and Digimon are different companies. Genshin and Honkai Star Roll is the same company. Like any passionate group, tends to develop a sense of tribalism. Yep. This tribalism, while fostering camaraderie within the community, can also lead to a natural inclination for anger towards a different community. Yep. Amidst the chaos of Twitter posts and Twitch clips, the gaming community is not immune to tribalistic tendencies. It's human nature to form groups and defend our interests passionately. I'm However, sorry. this can sometimes escalate into unnecessary animosity between communities. <laughs> the fervent loyalty to one <laughs> game or franchise over another can create an environment where any criticism, even if constructive, is perceived as an attack. Mm -hmm. Tribalism in the gaming community adds fuel to the fire, amplifying the intent- Because the problem is, is that when I shit talk Genshin Impact, people think that I'm saying- So what I'm saying is, I say, I think Genshin Impact needs work. But the problem is people take it as, if this guy says Genshin Impact needs work, that means I'm stupid. But it's like, bro, where in the f*** did you get that from? It, it's insane. It's insane the rationale that these people come to. Intensity of disagreements. Instead of healthy discussions, differences of opinion can turn into heated confrontations. Yep. It's essential to acknowledge that diverse perspectives contribute to a vibrant gaming ecosystem and that constructive criticism is not an assault on personal preference. Absolutely. Gacha games, with their random chance mechanics and enticing characters, create a unique environment. Content creators and players alike invest not just time, but often obscene amounts of money into the game, Absolutely. forming deep emotional connections with their virtual companions. And the other thing is, people gotta understand, like, this isn't just a other people thing. Like, I have spent at least a quarter mil on Genshin Impact, right? I put out a video saying exactly how much I've spent on it. But even me, after spending a small fortune on this game, can still acknowledge that it needs work. I'm never going to let people tell me that, oh, you're an idiot because you spent this amount of money on the game. Nor am I going to prevent that from me seeing the game for what it is. And that's very important to differentiate those two. 
This investment intensifies the passion within the community. It does, 100%. Turning discussions into fervent debates. Absolutely. The very because, because nobody wants to be told that, hey man, you wasted your money. Nobody wants to be told that. Nature of gacha games, where players can spend significant sums to acquire specific characters, adds a layer of emotional and financial commitment. As content creators invest time and money... Dude, I remember I had a buddy. Don't talk to him anymore. His name was Sal. And uh, he spent $10,000 on a gacha game just so he could beat me in PvP. And once he finally beat me, and he was so excited that he spent 10 k to beat me, I said, so man, how are you going to pay your rent? And then he like actually looked at me. It looked like he was about to like make like a jab back at me. And then he was just like, I, 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 I don't know. It, it'll be fine. And I'm just like, that's why you need to be careful with your money, man. It was insane. It was on Summoner's War. Spent 10 grand on it. Got the uh, the Light Panda. I think his name was like Mo Long or some shit. And he, he wrecked me. He absolutely did. But like, <laughs> he also wrecked his actual life. Into games that they love, their critiques become more poignant and the community becomes more vehement in their defense. Yep. This dynamic, fueled by personal investment, can lead to heightened drama and passionate confrontations. However, this intense connection with virtual characters can have unintended consequences. The immersive nature of gacha games can lead players to developing parasocial relationships with these digital entities. Inhibiting the boundaries yep. between reality and the virtual world, players may find themselves overly attached to characters, blurring the lines between fantasy and reality. There are people in this community who defend pixels more than they defend people who exist in real life. And it is definitely 1 million percent a product of mental illness. 1 billion percent. This emotional entanglement can contribute to an unhealthy gaming experience, fostering unrealistic expectations and potentially impacting mental well-being. Absolutely. As we explore the dynamics of gacha games and their impact on the community, it's crucial to recognize the potential development of these habits and encourage a balanced perspective. Understanding the distinction between the virtual and real world is essential for maintaining a healthy relationship with the gaming experience and preventing the negative consequences that may arise from intense emotional investment. Let's delve into the main layer of the drama, the dynamic between content creators and algorithms. Yep. It's no secret that drama tends to attract attention on platforms like Twitch and YouTube. Some content creators, whether intentionally or not, find themselves leaning into the drama to capitalize on the algorithms. The more sensational the content, the more- I think the problem is, is because drama equates to views for a lot of things, oftentimes people forget to mention the long-term damage it does to your channel because people weaponize and villainize the term drama. And so when people say, there's this reputation that forms where it says you're only covering drama for drama. But the other problem is, is that there's a lot of content creators who cover quote unquote drama because it needs to be talked about. And if everybody is worried about talking with the issues with their peers or their community, it's going to lead to a long lasting game state where people and the company are going to be able to get away with misaction after misaction with no consequence or any punishable outcome for their actions. And that's why it's very important to be vocal about what the bad things are. And you can say, oh, it's just drama, it's just drama. Yeah, but it's it's a necessary evil that more people should talk about. And to be honest, after this whole situation, the amount of channels that have been born from this is very good. And I do feel that people will be held more accountable. And I do feel less unfavorable things will happen because now people have an eye open to what is right and what is wrong. And I think that's very important. More views and engagements it tends to receive. Exactly, that's another thing. People saying people like VAs being harassed. That's not drama. That's an important issue that needs to be talked about because that behavior needs to be correct and corrected. And hopefully that makes sense. This trend raises questions about the fine line between genuine discussion and exploitation for financial gain. Yep. While it's natural for creators Absolutely. to adapt to the demands of the algorithms, Absolutely. there's a risk of the original purpose. 100%. Constructive criticism and improvement getting lost in the pursuit of clicks and revenue. Yep. Content creators, like anyone else, are susceptible to the emotional toll that drama can bring. 100%. The online world can be a harsh and unforgiving place, and the constant scrutiny, criticism, and sometimes even harassment can take a toll on their mental well-being. I mean, I'll, I'll keep it 100%. I, I like to keep it a buck. Yes. There was a time where when I was covering um, Gen Genshin Impact drama, the pushback was so insane. 
It made me feel like I lost my mind. I would have panic attacks two to three times every single day. And there was at least one night I thought about doing something incredibly, incredibly, incredibly dark that would not have been good for my physical well-being. Hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. Because it makes you feel like it's insane. And when you do cover drama, it, it makes you... This was long... This was like three years ago. Long time ago. Right? Like, it makes you feel like you're insane. Especially for more volatile, outspoken communities like the Genshin Impact one. Because... It's a thing that everybody does, but it's weaponized so much in this community. Like, they were ma they were making me feel like I was absolutely insane, even though I proved everything that I was saying back then. And the only reason why I came out on top this time is because finally people had my back. Finally people spoke out, and finally we talked about proof, and we stopped talking about how it made you feel versus what it is that actually happened. It doesn't matter how something makes you feel feel if it's irrational. It only matters the genuine things that did happen. And were those things as bad as you say? Were they objectively bad or are you just overly sensitive? Nobody should feel like they have to cater to somebody else's emotions in case they're oversensitive because that's not a burden that I'm willing to take on. It's not my job to make sure you feel good. It's just not. It is your job to make sure that you feel good. And no one should be expected to cater to your oversensitivity, right? So that's pretty much how it goes. That's why you can't cater to the oversensitive nature of Genshin Impact. And that's why they praise a lot of oversensitive content creators. Because they themselves are oversensitive. They themselves get caught up in their feelings. They themselves weaponize their emotions towards some other people. And that's why they praise pussy oversensitive content creators. And it's really not good. And we need to not cater towards those people. Because that's not how the real world works. And that way, if we want real people to play this game, then we need to treat this game as authentic as possible. And not pretend like the whole world this massive pussy hug box where we can all hug and kiss and make love to each other. When creators pour their energy into producing content, they may not anticipate the emotional burden that comes with being embroiled in 100%. online conflicts. The pressure to maintain a positive image while facing backlash can lead to stress, anxiety, and burnout. It's crucial for the community to recognize the human behind the screen and approach discussions with empathy. Many creators rely on platforms like YouTube, Twitch, or other social media channels as their primary source of income. The success of their channels is often tied to views, engagement, and sponsorships. Yep. Drama within the community can negatively impact these metrics. It does. The controversies overshadow their content. Creators. When Atsu made that video on me two years ago, I lost 110,000 subscribers for a false narrative that was spun. The dude lied, and I lost over 15% of my channel. Or it's more like 10% of Or like 12, 13% of my channel. Like, I mean, that's the shit that he got away with. Like, legit. I lost all of that over him lying. That's what's insane. Because they were calling me the manipulator when in reality it was him just projecting. But that's why drama is so dangerous because when you do get in drama, then people have the scapegoat of saying, oh, well, you're always in drama when in reality it was like, I'm just the guy who talks about the issues. He lied, got away with the narrative and took away all of that shit from my channel. And I'm still recovering that to today. You may see a decline in views, loss of sponsorships, and a general decrease in revenue. This financial instability can lead to additional stress and uncertainty about the future yep. of their careers. 100%. Beyond the virtual realm, the drama can spill into creators' real lives. The lines between online and offline existence are becoming increasingly blurred, and personal yep. relationships, family dynamics, and overall well-being... The fact that they went after my ex-wife over this was one of the most scummy things I've ever seen. And you know what the worst thing is? I haven't even covered all of it yet. I'm actually compiling just to let everybody know exactly what they did, and they don't get it yet. You guys don't get how f***ed up what they did was. And the worst thing is they supported each other over it. Just wait. That's coming out soon. Being can be affected. Content creators may find it challenging to separate their professional and personal lives, yep. leading to the additional strain on their relationships. Yep. Moreover, the weight of the community expectations and the fear of alienating their audience can cause creators to second-guess their actions and opinions. The fear of backlash may prompt them to censor themselves or avoid discussing certain topics altogether, compromising the authenticity that makes their content unique. Yep. Let's address another aspect of the community. Okay. The rising trend of oversensitivity among content creators. Absolutely. It's insane. Offhanded jokes, tweets or Twitch clips taken out of context, yep. and general hypersensitivity to any form of criticism. Like the fact that people don't know about the Vaporeon joke is insane. Like people actually thought I was a furry over that. Now let me ask you a question. Did I cry on the internet over that? 
No, I don't care. As a content creator, you need to be ready to see the worst shit about you read at all times. People are going to lie about everything. And this is the same thing as a viewer. You as a viewer should, you don't have to, you should understand that people are going to say whatever the about anybody and it's up to you to determine whether you want to or want to or want to not believe that. But you have to be ready to, no matter who the content creator is that you're watching, they are going to be racist, homophobic, transphobic, and they've probably killed 50 people in their past life. I have a crazy um, video that's going to summarize what it's like to see a Tectone hate thread on the internet. And we're just going to go ahead and pull this up real quick. This this is what it's like to essentially see a Tectone hate thread on the internet. Uh, and here you go. This is me. <laughs> and there you go. Hopefully that makes sense. This is pretty much what you sign up for the moment you start making content, man. This is the moment. It become prevalent. Some creators and their audiences seemed quick to anger over lighthearted comments, leading to unnecessary drama within the community. Yep. It's crucial to differentiate between genuine concerns and instances where an offhand remark is blown out of proportion. And here's the, here's the other thing that people need to understand. In order to kind of understand why people said this it's when somebody comes into your chat and talks about another content creator they could go oh i don't want to talk about that person or they can make a quick lighthearted joke and move forward hey bro did you see what this content creator did he's so much better than you you're so sick compared to him ah he's a mint picker and then you move forward if if you really are gonna cry about that just quit just quit being a content creator bro just quit. That's like me being upset if you were to call me bald. Like, come on, bro. The PTSD. Shut the f*** up. Sensitivity can sometimes create a toxic atmosphere where creators feel hesitant to express their opinions freely, yep. hindering healthy discussions. I mean, dude, do you know how many content creators in the Genshin Impact space have DM'd me to let them know that they don't feel comfortable talking about their point of view, to talk about their experiences? And I don't mean small creators. I mean, like, some of the cr biggest creators on the platform have DM'd me saying... I don't know who to trust. I don't know what I can say. I'm afraid of saying how I feel. And it's not good, guys. It's really not good. Because of this, there's a growing call for a more direct and collaborative approach. Too many creators in the space are often given vague tweets or clips with words taken completely out of context. Yep. Far too many times are content creators going back and forth on their live streams or tweets, opting out of the face-to-face -face discussion that should be utilized to hash out differences. Absolutely. Me controlling him? Do you know how disgusting that is? And truth be told, I thought you encouraged him to do so. I and imagine that, you fuck! These discussions not only allow creators to address concerns, but also provide a platform <laughs> for collaboration. Yep. Coming together in a more personal setting fosters understanding and helps bridge yep. gaps and perspectives. The shift towards open conversations encourages a more united and cooperative gaming community. Yep. Let's shift gears and focus on the company end. Competition breeds innovation. The intense rivalry between gaming communities and content creators can be seen as a driving force for positive change within the gaming industry. Yep. When games compete for players' attention, developers are motivated to continually innovate and improve their offerings. Think about it. The ongoing competition pushes game developers to explore new ideas, enhance gameplay mechanics, and deliver fresh and engaging content. This innovation benefits not only the developers, but also the players, as it elevates the why overall you, gaming experience. Why did you have to use B-roll of Nahida? I'm just going to keep it 100%, bro. Like, use anybody else, man. Come on. You have Navia and Raiden Shogun on your team, and you're not using any... Like, come on, bro. Get her off my screen. The desire to outshine the competition encourages a cycle of improvement, ultimately benefiting the entire gaming community. Yep. There have been murmurs within the community suggesting that Genshin Impact's company may, in some instances, encourage or exploit content creator drama to shift the spotlight away from them. Well, I this... mean, a good case in point is the exact same thing happened in WWE, where Vince McMahon got accused of being a sexual predator. So, <laughs> well, at this point, it's getting a little bit more than just accused. Very, very, very not good. And sex trafficking. So they intentionally made the decision to up the product of wwe to get people's attention off of the former coo being a sexual predator to man wwe so stupid they're 
bring up Cody versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40. It's it's a common business tactic to get some of their content creators to divert the attention from other people. I mean, why do you think certain content creators would weigh in at such an opportune time between drama of another content creator? It's, it's in an attempt to dunk on them, but for some people, it severely, severely, you know, backfires and they cook themselves. Claim is without any concrete Escape evidence. From Absolutely. It raises questions about Absolutely. how developers handle the challenges presented by an impassioned player base and content God, creators. Damn, that's a woman. The potential involvement of developers in stirring drama introduces a new layer to the conversation. Yep. If true, it challenges the notion that these companies are mere bystanders in the online discourse surrounding their games. Absolutely. It underscores the importance of transparent communication between developers and the communities, fostering trust and understanding. Yep. All right, so let's address the elephant in the room. Defending multi-billion or million dollar companies. Oh, here we go. There are people who care more about Hoyaverse than they care about their own family. It's not about blind loyalty, but holding these industry giants accountable for delivering quality content. Despite their massive yep. budgets, they're not immune to criticism or corrupts. Yep. Holding them to a high standard increases the likelihood of them creating games that meet our expectations. Consider this. Voicing concerns and providing constructive feedback initiates a dialogue between developers and the community. This interaction is invaluable, fostering a Absolutely. relationship beyond the simple exchange of goods and money. It demonstrates our deep care for the gaming medium and our desire to witness its evolution and improvement. Absolutely. All right, so in conclusion, being critical about video games is not only acceptable, but essential for the industry's growth. It empowers us to shape the future of gaming and encourages developers to push their boundaries. Remember, defending multi-billion dollar companies doesn't mean blind support. It means expecting the best and driving positive change within the gaming landscape. Yep. So hear me out. At the end of the day, what truly is the point of going after each other? We're all nerds and gamers at heart. We should be focusing our attention on encouraging change to the multi-billion dollar corporations that we're not happy with. Yep. Alright, so I know this video seems very vague and not touching on any specific points within the drama of the communities. Yep. The video was originally meant to delve into the more nitty gritty of the ongoing drama between the two communities, but yep. the script has changed over a dozen times in the past few days trying to keep good. up with the evolving landscape. It was really good. Should I make a detailed video? Let me know. Please do. Hey, go and download. Alright, well, I appreciate you guys listening, and if you've made it this far, I offer you my sincerest thanks. Be sure to drop a subscribe and make sure to follow me over on Lol Shinya and Twitch and Twitter. Uh, I'm going to go and expose this guy. Hey, gotcha community. Letting you guys know this guy is white. Okay. That means that he's not a good guy. So just want, he's not using face cam because he doesn't want you guys to know. This guy is a white man. Right. So just keep that in mind, guys. Anyways, good video. Hey, I like you. I like you. Shinya, what a good video. What a good, good, good video. Boys, let's get this man to a thousand subs real quick. Let's get him to a thousand subs real quick. What a banger, banger, banger video. And if you guys want to do him a favor, open up his video, leave it on, put it at times 0.25 speed, and just keep it on loop. That way we can get him to 1,000 watch hours. That way he can monetize his channel. Let's just do that real quick. What a banger, banger, banger video. And if you saw that, I highly encourage you to go subscribe. It, it's really nice having more people be able to speak up on the nuances between drama between creators, drama between company. And it's we do need more people who are willing to, one, be able to articulate that in a very easily digestible way, as well as people who are able to step back, get a nuanced perspective, and explain that. So it's very, very, very good. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yes, I could have, but I'm too lazy to put it in video format. It's easier for me to react to you than make my own content. Hey, Shinya, good shit, baby.